I still remember somebody came over and told me, "Oh, there is a director called Murray Kerr, and you have to go ahead and watch this movie." One, mm-hmm. right? Did did you hear? I just started. One, uh, it had been two, three years back. Four years back, I was media man. I go and this is my television. My show was there. Did you hear? I in Nepal, my show was there, and this is why your movies are promoted. One person went to buy it, and this is my idea. It cost two rupees. You six city. I know, and he got sorry, but he got it all. I mean, run and gun too. Did he? Yeah, I know that time. It's a very underdog cinema, to be honest, because that cinema was the first of its kind for Nepali industry. You know, I mean, we don't have, we don't make underdog cinemas. On a the similar year, I think, uh, Danny Boyle was making Slumdog Millionaire in India, but in a larger scale. Which is also known as underdog cinemas. The Pachari, I think, uh, more than Nepal, Six City got a little bit of recognition in Europe hmm. because they are very, very much familiar with the genre itself, and they linked uh, Six City with this movie called Pusher, which is uh, Mads Mikkelsen's first movie, I guess. Pusher. Pusher. One, two, three. There's three parts. So Pusher. Was very close to Six City, whereas uh, some one, I don't know that time, that that like in 2010 review was a big thing, and then like people writing like newspapers and everyone was writing so much about yeah. cinemas. And I read one article about Six City, claiming more rugged. Yeah, that's a pusher. Yeah, that's a pusher. It's Matt Mikkelsen's first film. Yeah. Yeah. Six and Six Cities uh, review? No, what was it? What were you saying? Uh, six City and like Pusher is is the same kind of like it's a very underdog cinema. Yeah. And Pusher is about like in oh. Europe, like especially in Denmark, Pusher is known as the pe- person who sells drugs. Huh. So it, they had to be like bald, a little bit like short haired, like British guys, and then uh, you can easily figure it out because I don't know if you have been there or not, but then there's a place called. Uh, this is not it. This is the BDC Six City body. Yeah. Find the Nepali Six City. This is <laughs> Courtney James, James. right? So yeah, yeah. Six City more like here. Twenty ten, my short got it. filmed in twenty nine, two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Filmed. We started filming in two thousand eight, eight and got released in two thousand ten. Ten. Yeah. Yeah. Just try that to go ahead and find. This is my very first movie. I guess. That's your first movie, right? Yeah. And then I got Batch Number Sixteen. Batch number sixteen, two some ago, like you said, you said, you said, you said, a different money too, budget money too, on certain too. Yeah. Any Shiva Pariyar could do get funny a little bit, but the songy. Yes, yes. Oh. And uh, we shot it for three months, to be honest, back to back, completely. I'm mean, like, I don't know. I don't know what went wrong in 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 one way, because. Uh, I I sometimes the people I mean like we have this logic saying like oh it's too early for our industry kind of thing I d- which I don't believe in but then like after that see there are few many things batch number sixteen did good for Nepali industry the first time using Steadicam. Did you want to get it quite even then? No, there was no Steadicam ever been used I guess huh. and so much of frequently. Using Johnny G for the shots and things, all this, and it is pretty long misjansin uh, scenes. And uh, at least one good thing about Batch Number Sixteen that I say still today is stick with the genre. The biggest problem we have in our Nepali cinema is we want to make a good film, yeah. and when we want to make a good film. Sometimes we g- don't give a shit about logic or sp- specially grammar. So you can make an action film, but then like you have to define what action film it is. Hmm. Is it a comedy action film? Is it a thriller action film? Or is it a hardcore drama action film? Or what genre it occupies? So if you don't stick with that genre, then most likely you might like the movie, but then like if you look. Through grammatical uh, sense and like all these logical things, then it doesn't make any sense. Which I know most of eighty percent of the audience don't give a shit. But we, being a filmmaker, always have to I think stick with 
certain rules and regulations if we want our industry to flourish around the world. Otherwise, we'll just be like, okay, they make movies, that's it, kind of thing. Tell me something. I, I always wanted to understand this. You know? I'll, 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 jump into, I'll jump into life, I'll jump into so many different things. Mm-hmm. You know? The movies that you pick, <coughs> mm-hmm. I'm not just talking about direction. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about uh, as character as well. Mm-hmm. The movies that you pick are very unique, very different, uh, very out of the box, mm-hmm. I know, including your characters. Mm-hmm. Out of the box, Santa. Mm-hmm. Every single character that you've played is out of the box, is not your mainstream. Mm-hmm. Did you always decide that, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pick something like this, pick something which is very challenging, which is very, very unique, or it automatically happens and then you end up getting those roles? See, there's two ways, I guess. What works for me is like, see, before you watch any cinema, in cinemas or like any, any other platform, it is made in script or you can screenplay, right? So any character or any, 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 any individual character that's written on screenplay is known as a character, right? But as an actor, our job is not, to, not just to be that character, but to, to make that character alive through using the, uh, what do you call it, using all the emotions that we carry in our real life, right? So when you are y- you using your emotions to build up a character, that means you're actually behaving your, your body language through body language, the way you talk, the way you look, the way you dress, everything. So behavior is also a very important thing to build a character. So one person will write up a character as an actor, our job is to behave like a character. Then only you'll look like a character or believe people will believe you as a character. So more than acting, it is behaving. So that is what I pick and try to behave rather than leave or die as a character. Yeah, there's a saying, um, you know, I don't know how true it is, I know. When Heath Ledger did, mm. you, you, again, yeah, yeah. when Heath Ledger did uh, that specific role of Joker, he locked himself up. Yeah. Months. Yeah. Months. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a hotel room. He went crazy. And like he went complete, complete, total mm-hmm. crazy. And then when he came out. Yeah, he was a masterpiece. It was a masterpiece. It was something See, this is what, I mean, like, y- y- we don't realize one thing, as a filmmaker, I guess, is to make a character, we just don't need actor only. We need every department to be involved, to build a character. The people who's going to make your dress, the people who are going to make your hair, the people who are going to shot you, the people who are going to tell you what to do, what not to do, everyone's involvement is so much necessary. Then only you can come up with something really different. And above all, the whole team has to believe, like, like when you are ma- try, uh, making a movie, everyone believes in the director, right? So when a director comes with a certain kind of characterization, then he also believes in an actor. That's why you need a good actor. You just don't need good actor to act on cinema. You need good actor to behave like character. So once you don't have that, then you miss up. But it's not just that. If the director is not giving you enough space or if screenplay doesn't have enough space for you to behave like a character, then you're dead. Hmm. before you start. So everyone has to make sure that they are doing what the actor is doing or the director is doing. Then only it will come up. That's why, see, look at, like, let's talk about our never, never in country, right? Yeah. Talk about, like, let's not talk about Bollywood because it's always been, I don't know, something different. But if you check out the South Indian cinemas, the original cinemas. 
in each cinema, you will see how much effort they put to build up characters, like main characters and the villain. Hmm. Talk about KGF, talk about Bahubali, talk about Arara, talk about like all this, anything, Puspa or whatever. Like, look at the cinema. When you watch cinema, what do you see? You see characters, they develop characters, they build characters, they enhance characters, and they focus on the characters, and that's how they tell the story. Hmm. And what we're missing out, I guess, is like, for 10%, we focus on the character, and for 10%, we focus on other characters, and 10%, we focus on the story, and 10%, we focus on the, all the selling elements. And then there's a bit of everything, but nothing is perfect. So these are the things I think what we need to focus on, or at least at least now is the high time for us to, because look at Bhutan, right? This year they managed to be in top five with the movie called Yak in the Classroom. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have no idea about mm -hmm. this. Yak in the... Classroom. Yak in the classroom. Find out about this movie. Uh, Bhutanese movie, right? Bhutanese movie. Then the top five of... Oscar. Yeah, this year. Holy shit, I didn't know that. That's so awesome. Yak in the classroom. Yeah. I'm sure there's literally a yak in the classroom. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so it's it's not a movie like KGF or Avenger or any, any, any sort of thing. It's just a simple story that tells. Yeah, that's the one. Lunana, a yak in the classroom. Nice. Yeah. What is it about, Dai? It's about uh, a young guy going up in one of the most remote villages in Bhutan. And then he is in a school where he has to teach these kids. And school yeah, is kind that. of a, a yak shed, like, and he cannot be removed, I guess. Really <coughs> nice, really nice. Uh, go to Wikipedia. I really want to... Uh, oh, this is so nice. I know. Wiki Mata Uta. Go back. Uh, so out of nowhere, they just popped up in Oscar. Yeah. This just open this. Uh, zoom into it. You know I'm getting old. Luna Yang in the classroom. Bhutanese drama film racer. Nice. Mm. Uh, really nice. Best international feature films at the 40 94th. Yeah, it won Academy BFI. Awards. It was in BFI as well. Really nice. Really yeah. nice. Bhutan. Bhutan, yeah. So see, this is what I mean. It's like, uh, I know the commercial part of cinema is different, right? But then at the same time, somebody, I'm like people are doing, uh, I'm not saying like uh, Nepal is completely out of this uh, art house cinema section or like uh, commercially uh, feasible for like, Netflix or Hulu or any other platform or even for the Oscar. But the sad thing is there has been a movie called Honey Hunter yeah. and then Caravan, right? So both of the movie, one is a documentary, one is a feature. Both did really well internationally from Nepal, but not Nepali. It's a French cinema, right? But this director spent seven years living up in the mountains and casting all non-actors and making a story about assault. So, I think what we lacking in terms of uh, true cinema making is now is a high time for us at least to know what we're doing. You know, there was a time, I've seen, I've been through that. There was a time when we had so many, like in cinema you need 50 to 60 people at least, you know, in the crew members and things doing, everybody's doing something. And most of them are like, just given it. They don't own it, they don't know what they're doing. They're just doing it because they have the opportunity to do, to do it. So we need to stop that if we want our cinema to be somewhere worth. So mm, we need to, I, I, I keep saying this in, in, in very spiritual form, but to ask and to seek are two different things. Mm. So we need to stop asking, we need to start seeking. 
I guess. Let me let me let me ask you this. One movie that you are satisfied and content that you did that you were a part of. Is there any movie that you are satisfied and content? No, I guess to be honest because not because cinema uh, all the cinemas that I did or whoever made uh, whoever cinema I worked is bad. Not that way. What I mean is like there's no one cinema which actually justifies the characters or its presence or the stories that been told in in in, in a way so all we uh, have always been lacking something in, including the cinemas that i make that you make for yeah. example let's say mohota like like yeah mohota sun kesari adala bhut kar and then all this movie right and i understand honestly there's like 20000 different like problems that occurs when you are doing your cinema sometimes you are out of budget sometimes you don't have the actor that you cast you want to cast sometimes the location issues sometimes the timeline and all these things but that could that those 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 uh, what do you call it those those uh, loopholes we can we can like permanently stop by being very conscious at the time we do pre production hmm. or at least we come see sometimes the problem is the script says so many things right and if you calculate it if you budget it properly it might need 1 million dollars and you're willing to it make it for 30 lakhs or 50 lakhs how are you going to cope that how are you going to make it happen so basic formula for me that i understand is write a script that you can make it in, in in the budget that you have and if you have the movie script that is above the budget that you had then wait don't just rush wait until you have enough budget so that you save us at the same time <laughs> you don't have this million people saying you like what the fuck was that kind of thing you know i know i know, I know exactly what you mean <laughs> and i know exactly which all movies you're talking about <laughs> अगिना के दाई यो अगिना हमें सुरू में रेवेन्ट को ओपन दिस मूवी दिस इज वन अफ माई फेवरेट मूवीज एंड आई एम आई एंड आई लव इट दैट हजर को योर फेवरेट मूवी रही वन अफ योर फेवरेट मूवीज है ओपन रेवेन्ट है लेट्स टेल एवरीबडी क्या खिचे रही क्या खिचे याद ए हो रहा कैनाडा में ओपन दिस मूवी इट्स लियोना डिकैपियो थम हार्डी डिड यू फाइंड इट Yeah, you found it. All right, cool. Yeah. This is the movie. This is the movie uh, DiCaprio got the Oscar for. Yes. If first, I'm not mistaken. First is this is the first Oscar. Now, now this movie is one movie which they could have shot it in Nepal too. Yeah. They would have they could have. But then uh, I think you know if I say if the producer really wanted to make it in a like the average budget then they should maybe they would have come to nepal or maybe nepal is not exposed to the point where you take nepal as an option for your cinemas but there are any many other things as well it's not just about how beautiful your our country is it is you can still come you can still shoot and things like that but there are other criterias that has to be fulfilled for international cinemas to come in nepal and be a part of our location like like there is such things as location rebates producers offsets what is the benefit that we giving to for international crews of international cinemas so that they come to our, our country and shoot their films like australia gives 40% of producers offset Hold on, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's explain this in a very easy way so that people in power can understand. Can you just explain this in a very okay. easy way? Layman's term. Layman's. So, for example, see, uh, there's a movie called Aquaman. Mm. They shot it in Gold Coast in Australia, Brisbane, right? So, Australia gives forty percent of producers rebate that if you spend one million making your film. 
then they will return you back 400,000 if you come under the criteria. And then you have location rebate. The amount of money that you spend for location, the 15% of that's going to come back to you after you're done with the shooting. Hmm. And then there is another factor called uh, PDV, Post-Production Development Fund. You don't have to be Australian for that. You can do the post in Australia and still claim for PDV, which might be around 10% to 15% again. So the studios makes money before they release their movie through upsets and so many other things. So if I am willing to make, say, uh, if I am I'm Warner Brothers and willing to make cinemas and I like Nepal as an option, but why not go to Australia? Why not go to Canada? Because they're giving upsets as well. Hmm. You know? So those are like so many other things which like uh, because of which you choose locations as per your convenience. How can we make it possible in Nepal? Because right now, uh, l let me just put it right here. Uh, there's a tourism uh, revival committee as well. Mm -hmm. We have NTB. We have so many different organizations <laughs> which are trying to go ahead and uh, make, uh, which are trying to go ahead and make so Nepal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forty percent, which are trying to go ahead and make uh, Nepal uh, accessible uh, to a lot of people. We just had a, I believe, a Turkish uh, actor, a very fantastic Turkish uh, actor, was here in Nepal as well, trying to, mm -hmm. you know, and the revival committee got him as well uh, on board. So this is something that uh, we could definitely look into. Yes, I think it's very necessary because uh, why do we need film development board? Why? Tell me one reason why we need that. Just because we make cinemas, there has to be film development board, and then that's the reason why we have it. Uh, there are other reasons. Like any 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 upcoming director, small like students making their f they pass out from film schools and things like that. They don't have access. They don't have enough money. They h hardly maintain to make five minutes or three minutes short films which might be good, yeah. then who's going to take care of that cinema? Where are they going? Who's taking care of their loving and their, their air fees and tickets and all like putting into international platforms and things? Those are the access in any film development board in their country has. They got to figure out, they got to, they got to find out that ta talent. They got to put because every year they get invitation from all around the world, especially bigger festivals. And tell me one person who is going. I'm not going. So who is going? I don't see any small like uh, newcomers also going. Then who is going? So which festivals are giving us subsidies? Which festivals are giving us opportunities? Which festivals are like... Like imagine Busan. Busan is one of the interna like Busan International Festi Festival is is well known in Asia, right, or all around the world. It's a good platform. So it's Sundance, so it's Berlin, so Cannes, and uh, all these things. But for the people who cannot, who don't have access to to, to the major festivals, who's helping them? Hmm. And if development board is not doing that, then what else are they doing? What are Find the steps out the they? ways mm -hmm. to tie up with Australian cinema industry, uh, Canadian cinema in this industry, European cinema industry, to figure out how you can subsidize our cinema while we shoot there and their cinemas, how to get them here. How can we exchange the possible ways to work in a, in a good environment first? And then how can we benefit through that? If Australian government is giving 40% rebate and 15% location rebate and all these things, if Canada is giving 42%, London is giving 32%, America is giving 25% as per the state things, right? And there is criteria. I tried to talk with Australian, because I am an Australian Directors Guild member. I'm mm. ADC. That's became two years ago. And... 
was trying talking about like there is another big thing called co-production, mm. right? If you have a subject that uh, tells something about Australia and some, or not just Australia, any other country and our country, if you collide that subject and try to put it for the co-production funding, the list is ten million dollars. Hmm. They'll give you. But who's trying to get it at first? There are uh, producers, uh, 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 association who, who, who awards every year, which producers association can't tie up with uh, other other department in, in any part of the world, hmm. and send our cinema that there, with that so like. Bollywood does that. Like, why do you think uh, Switzerland was so popular in Bollywood movies before? Just because they like the place? No, because they were getting too much of upsets. Hmm. They were getting paid for that, and still there. So M- maybe we could do it with Bollywood cinemas too. We maybe we could ask the Bollywood cinema industry Look, to come and film here. We have. Neighboring countries, for 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 example, if you just look through the benefit of being a neighbor, look how many people China has, how many people India has. Yeah. If you can collide, or if you can have a good talk with the Chinese industry and the in Bollywood industry, or like I don't say Bollywood, I say like Indian cinema industry. Cinema industry. Then if when if you get a like fifteen percent corner, how much money are you gonna make from both the countries? How much dongle made in China? Twelve hundred crore. Did it? Yes. I didn't know that. You know that? Yeah. So alone, China has more than twelve thousand theaters now. What? What a all Indi- around all yeah. around the world. When back old days, like for let's say like ten years ago, when Hollywood was releasing their movie, it was around the world was like forty five hundred theaters, right? They used to release. Now, they only have like. Uh, Hold on, I had no idea. Hold on, I had no idea about this. Amir Khan's dongle continues to be the most popular Hindi movie of all time in China. Just so it's dubbed in Chinese. Everything is in Chinese. Thirteen hundred crore. Jesus, I had no idea about this. I really had no idea about this. We could totally country of origin, China and India. Oh, okay. But no, but there is a reason why chi- uh, dongle worked so well in China. Kinara. So, so even like me being Nepali, if I'm watching Chinese movie or like any other movies, right? Somehow I have to be connected with the story to like their story. Yeah. Either it's eye candy like Avengers. Yeah, or if I like something which has a story, then I got to be familiar with the back stories, like backgrounds. So, Dangal is a movie about two girls whose father always wanted a son and to be proud of them by by being wrestler. But unfortunately, he has a daughter, and he's very upset about that. But one day he finds out that, like, okay, why not? What what, what difference gonna make, daughter or son? If they become the wrestler, they become a wrestler. Yeah. Right? No, that's really fascinating that uh, China, it dongle worked in China. I had no idea about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. How about our movies? Did our movies, have our movies ever made a crossover? See, to Open day? Not yet. We are still on uh, on the way, I guess. And one day in a few couple of years or by the decade, we might be. But the point is, it's not just about the storyline, but we un- need to understand. A guy and a girl falls in love in Butwal. Who I am living in Dallas. Why the fuck I give a shit about two guy, a ma- guy and a girl falling in love in Butwal? Does it make any sense to me? It doesn't make any sense to me. Right? So is like in Iran, someone is uh, climbing mountain with a blackboard just to like uh, give a kids. Like things, education, education. So, 
okay, why I will be interested is because once I know the history of Iran or Iraq, saying like, okay, they've been through many civil wars and there's still things are going on and then it's very chaotic and lots of like world politics has been has been played through one way or another and so many other things. So we are, and they're Muslims and they're like, we are familiar with so many other cultural things in them. So that becomes the backdrop of the story. And now it becomes more interesting. Why you think caravan worked? Caravan worked is not just because like the story of the old like village and then like the, uh, how hard it was for them to survive in, in, mm. in the time of like when there was no food and things like that. But a village, a mountain village that has this amount of people and the every year they trade salt with the food or things like that, or money. But where? In the Everest, in the Mount Everest village. Now, even if I'm not familiar with the storyline, I am still very much known about the fact of existence of Everest, Mount Everest. So it doesn't matter where I am. So I st I'm, I'll still be interested to know about the Mount Everest village. So backdrop is um, that's very important. Hmm. So Dongal had a backdrop of daughters. You know, Bahubali, even even if it's worked, it had a history as a backdrop. Hmm. Back old days, costumes, production values, and all these things. So my point is. It doesn't have to be big, but we need to have something to sell it in the world. What do you think of uh, Nimstay's uh, movie, Fourteen Peaks? Yeah, I mean, what is the best and the most biggest backdrop in the history of documentary? Is Fourteen Peaks itself? So people might might not knew Nims back then, but then then knew about at least one or two peaks of somebody knew about 14 peaks or somebody knew about like five peaks. So there was something for international audience. Whereas like if we are releasing our cinema yeah. now, which we do, then what is there for international audience? Just wearing Dhaka Topi and Daura Solo is not enough. We need more than that. And I've been looking at your ring, and then it reminds me of Inscription. Tell me, tell me, go for it. What do you think? It's a maze. Yeah, I guess. Right? Yeah, it is. It is a maze. It is a and maze. It's a never-ending maze. If you check out the poster of Inscription in Minimalist, I think they have this. They have very similar maze. They have a very, 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 very similar maze. Yeah. We, we we could talk about movies all day long. Mm -hmm. I'd love to. I want I want to talk to you about domestic movies. Mm -hmm. Movies that cater our almost uh, three crore uh, population. Movies that you've played. How can we make different movies here? We don't have to make different movies. That is the point. We don't have to at all. We don't have to. We just have to make a good movies. We just have to make sure that like the movie that I want to make has something to say. I just don't want to do it for the sake of doing it. Because, see, this might be a very, very, like, I don't know, unnecessary for me to talk about. But then, like, see, we have people who lived in, lives in, like, America, Australia, London, or whichever part of the world for 15, 20 years. And then, then after 25 years, they have settled down. They've got job. They've got work. They have money and every these things and this thing. And now they think, like, what should I do? Hmm. Right, and sometimes they have access to the friends and sense of oh, someone is making a movie and this and that. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna fund something for you as a friend, or like I like to fund. But then, there are s it is money doesn't just doesn't come with easy access, right? It comes with so many other criteria. And once you start fulfilling the criteria of the finances, then you don't know where you are. You'll be able to make your movie, but you don't know whether you're making a good movie or a bad movie. Because if you can't make the movie that you want, and then, see, this is another problem that 
I have faced so many times, and I've, I've said this to many people, said like, when I come with, uh, I write as well, right? <coughs> and then when I have a script, and people say like, okay, why can't we change this, and why can't we do this, and this, this, and that's fine. I'm not against that. But I write the movie that it's not necessary for me to, I like it. I write it the way it should be written, not the way I like it. So cinemas are like that. It should be made the way it should be made, not the way the people who funding or just people, few people who just thinks they know everything. How about Mokhota? Let's say, let's, 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 for example, Mokhota. See, Mokhota, I say it's a. Uh, we did it in 2010, right? And uh, there was like uh, many things, as well, but. I think I take most of the responsibility myself is because that was my very first feature as a director. And uh, I was a bit immature at the same time. But I tried. I tried my best because even if today anybody once comes to me and asks about each and individual shots, why? There's a close-up. Why there's a white? Why there's track? Why there's no drone? I can answer that. Because I know how white. Look at the color tone. The guy who did that color is now in India. He's, a, he's an Italian guy. He was here for the vacation. I picked him up and then I found him like, I'm, gonna, I'm making this movie. Would you like to do color correction for my cinema? And then he's like, okay. And back that time, he was just doing short films. And after he did Mukhoda, he got Suntali. And after Suntali, he applied for India. And now he did Uri, Biki Gossels. Now Deepika Pardon goes Gehraya, and Netflix typewriter, and so many other things. So he's doing good. He started from Nepal. My point is, even though it didn't make a good money, yeah. I still managed to do a few things right. And I, I, I think it's will, it will be unfair for anyone to judge me with just one flame, is because that was my very first flame. Yeah. And I did what I could. You tried your best. Yeah, and then there are so many other factors which I, which I obviously cannot talk about. <laughs> <laughs> like, tell me something. I know you stayed in Bombay for how many years? Three years. Two thousand, early two thousand. I went in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. And then I came back in two thousand three. Uh, before that, I was in Darjeeling doing my schooling and college and everything. And then I went to Mumbai and then came back. You went to study? Yeah. Where did you study then? Kishore Namit Kapoor Acting School. That was quite popular because of Hrithik Roshan back days. He's the first like very known actor pass out. And then the rest is like everyone. Like from s most of the actors, new new actors from South India to John Abraham to Yikta Mukhi to Priyanka Chopla, to everyone was passed from that same school. So, you always wanted to be an actor? No, I seriously wanted to be a footballer. Which right. never happened. Yeah, I had heard that before. I had heard that you really wanted to be a footballer, and you know, and, and I was good at playing football. To be honest, can I call the coach right now? <laughs> 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 no, the thing is. Some people are born with the talent, you know. Some people are born with the talent. That's what that's what they say. You know, you're, you're just born with it. I think somehow I earned it more than I born yeah. with it because th that is not my that was not my dream at all. And in another way, you can say yes is because I just ended up there without much much of my interest. But I was a hardcore cinema lover as, 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 as an audience. Yeah. But I was the most sized person in the world, I guess. One of the most sized person. So I never thought, like, I'm going to ever be able to act in front of a camera where the 20,000 people are standing. 
but it happened. So, I don't know, maybe destiny, what do you call it? Did you ever decide to do, did you ever think of doing anything else except for, you know, you sold CDs as well, you did so many different things. Mm -hmm. Did you decide that I'm going to jump into other things? Yeah, before that I was trying to go to Iraq when there was like a civil war happening because I heard the American army is recruiting people from all around the world for the help and things like that. And they were giving the good money and then I was like, oh, okay, why not? Make some money with the American army? Yeah. <laughs> In Iraq? <laughs> yeah, but thank God it didn't happen. Yeah, thank God it didn't <laughs> happen, man. How about your parents, they? Why am I like, keep on doing they wanted you to, they were okay with you joining cinema? See, I'm not going to be like, uh, what do you call it, very diplomatic about those things. We all are familiar with our how the situation is. Situation was and is and how our parents think and how we think, right? All, everyone in the world, or like especially in this part of the world, our parents want a secure future. Exactly. They want you to have a house, they want you to have a car, they want you to have the bank balance and then get married to a nice girl and have kids and then live happily. Above that is very exceptional. So my parents were not different than that. But then like, I was trying hard enough and then my intention was not to be someone very popular or you know things like that and this. I also wanted, okay, I just need some sort of security for my life. That's why I was trying everything. But then like, I don't know, somehow I just ended up in Mumbai and then started doing my film school things and I came back and then like, I did nothing for five, six years. Exactly, that's what I was thinking, yeah. DVDs and things. Where was this? Kampichari CD? Mahabodha. Mahabodha, I say, I was, this was my friend's shop and I was so broke. You didn't have any money. I didn't have any money. And I was in, like back old days, you know, the excess was CDs, DVDs. Yeah. And I had managed to get a small DVD player for myself with a TV. But I didn't have enough money to get CDs every day. So I told my friend, like, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to work for you as long as I want to. And then... I have to watch the movies to sell it. Yeah. You know. And every day I had few c- d- d- DVDs in my hand when I go back home to watch. Yeah. And that was the most, I didn't get care about how much money I was getting and what the people are saying about me or anything. I was like happy because like I, I was into cinema so much. I was watching every day new cinemas. And I was trying to talk about it the whole day because that was my job. And I still remember there was this uh, man, old man called Dabe Bhagat. I think he lived in Sanipa as well. And he was a writer for Times of India. Hmm. And he used to write foreign films for Himalayan Times, I think. Hmm. DVD section. And he was the one who said like, you sure you're just a salesman? I think... (laughs) How you know about the cinemas and then because he was a writer, critic, right? And that's how he know. And that that is the place where I met Murray. Hmm. At the DVD shop? Yeah. He used to come and buy DVDs and he used to sell. And one day he said to me, like, oh, no, 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 come on, come on. Like, what? who are you? Why are you here? I'm like, what? How, what do you mean? And he said, like, no, 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 you're not just a salesman. Like, you, you know a lot about cinema, so who are you? And then how? that's how we became friends. And he was just, also he, he had passed out from... Westminster and then he was writing the script Six City and he wanted to make it happen here and then that's how we got involved and then we finally did Six City your character was called Krishna I believe Krishna originally I was not supposed to play the character but then I don't know something happened and Mori was not happy with the people that we were trying to find out and then he said like oh, fuck it will you do it yeah it's like okay why not why not Jesus life life takes turns <laughs> huh if you hadn't done Six City I don't know, second movie, Batch number 60. Batch number right? 60 yeah. I don't know if that would have worked out. And then yeah. that's that's it. Yeah. Whose photo is that? Who is that? That's me. That's you, right? Yeah. Jesus, that's you, eh? <laughs> that's, <laughs> you look so different at that time, right? 
X, go back and find the uh, find the trailer. Tha. I I I still remember too. What is just to match? Okay, to just to match. Lighting has a use. Got it. So I know the movie. Can you believe? Like we shot this in PD PD one fifty camera, which even in for like uh, like Biak Mapani didn't they used more than above the, above that above that. So we only had one feet PD one fifty. Me, Murray, and another one, another guy called uh, Naresh Kumar Kesi. So we were the crew members. That's it, three people. Three people. One time, one a few times, uh, uh, Naresh came up with his friends. But altogether, we were four people, shooting for six months, because we didn't have money. This is this is. This is uh, the full movie, buddy. You can't play the full movie. <laughs> you got to find the trailer. I'm sure the trailer is there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Try to find the trailer. No. Poyla, Re- remember there was a movie. There was a movie that was uh, r- that was filmed running and gunning it. Not a bad movie. It was called... Uh, oh, my God. It's a ghost movie. It's such a famous movie. Uh, Wh- which one? Nepal? Blair Witch Blair Project. Witch Project, yeah, yeah. That's a crazy movie. It's a crazy movie. And... Trust me, I I was uh, I used to watch a lot of horror cinemas back old days because I love horror thriller. And then one day I watched this movie called Paranormal Activity. Oh shit, that's a crazy movie! And then from that day I stopped watching horror movies and I'm still not watching any other movies. That's a crazy movie. That I can't yeah. do it. I watched that movie. I I fucking can't do that movie. Yeah. That movie. And then after watching Exorcism of Emily Rose, yeah, I gave up. Mm. I can't do it. Exorcist is also like great, the movie. But Conjuring has always been a good commercial uh, horror. I can't do that either. Oh my god! Yeah. Okay, I can't do that either. That's too scary for me. And so then the movies that you've made. <laughs> yeah, one movie we recent like few years ago, not not like bef- uh, before the second first lockdown. Actually, second lockdown. Sorry. We did one movie called Budgar, mm. which is about. Uh, a house in a pokhra which is in real known as Vudgar. Okay. And it's quite popular uh, in, in, in YouTube and things like that. As well, Sarangkot ko Vudgar. Sarangkot ko Vudgar. Khoz da? Tanya sunya si istiya Sarangkot ko Vudgar ko baare mai. Oh, you know about that? Yeah. How come you know about all this? Zada hiri baato mai chauke dai. Yeah. Yeah. Ora? It's quite I mean, popular. People stop and and then drive and say like, I also want to see and I also want to see Nagar Kot Kot Nagar Kot 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 So somebody took a photo uh-huh. at night sometimes when you take a photo at night and mistakenly you're smoking a cigarette or let's say to do uh-huh. and uh-huh. and to that's what I think so, in it, so there's a photo of there's a okay so imagine you're in the jungle of Nagar Kot all right and somebody whoever is taking a photo of course he has a cigarette in his hand yeah. oh there you go oh my god yeah. I think Sarankot ko budgar gare bhane ha I know you chai Nagar Kot ko budgar budgar e bhut ko kura thiyo ke euta haina you this is it yeah i saw the whole film there in here? Yeah, uh, it's not released yet. It's somebody's house? Yeah. Jeez. There's two houses. This is the front and Bobak. there's another one. X, find the other one. Find the other section of this house. Uh, you? Yeah. What's uh, the name of This place is owned by a Nepali guy married to this Japanese woman. Mm-hmm. And there's a weird story about this. Is like they claim that especially this uh, guy like uh, Pale. They say like uh, they built a house. They did a wa- house warming party. And then they left and never came back. What? Okay, yeah. hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> let me let me fix your mic slightly and then all right. So. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. A Nepali guy married to a Japanese woman. Yeah. Right? And they built this house. It's in 35 Rupani. Uh, altogether, the land they have. And they built two houses. And that's why the first house that you see is com- it, it's, it's Japanese design. So they did a housewarming party as per the story. 
and never came back. And never no came back. And no one knows why. No, nobody knows where they are. No, they're in Japan. They're in Japan, but they never came back. They never came back. And what the biggest question was always why, when yeah. you build a house, and that big, and that unique at that point time, is Rupani. within thirty-five rupees, on top of hill, where you can have a view of mountains and all these things. This is the house. See, this is the f- Jesus. And wow. There's f- two floor, and its floor is one room. So this is the pillar, and this is the room. X. No, no. I want a creep. I have. Peter Pasna Monai. Monai. That's the second house. Pointy Shropanigo. I think they own the whole building at Jungle Town there as well. X. No, no. Move forward. Move forward. I want to see more. Uh, 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 uh. You filmed the whole movie in here? Yeah. The movie is called Budgar? Yeah. Because this is known as Budgar. What? There's such a beautiful house up there. And nobody, of course, nobody's going to buy it. Nobody's done anything with it. You, and sh- I, I shot it in two days. The whole movie? Yeah. Two days. Feature film. Feature film in two days? Okay, would you mind elaborating a little bit on it? <laughs> this is very much similar. It's not like paranormal activi- activities, but then like it's very close to the theme. So we set up like uh, nine different cameras. So actor moved, we didn't move. We roll the camera and the story goes as per the character moves. So it's very experimental though. Huh. Throughout the house. Throughout the house. How many characters? One. That's it. That's it. Nobody else. Nobody else. The story is based on like we wanna make a horror movie in the movie. We wanna make a horror movie, but not like a regular horror movie. We wanna put our actor in the house for a night, placed with a camera, and tomorrow we're gonna come back and see what happens. Who played it? Did you play it? No. Sri Jana Rigmi. Yeah. She's the one who played the character. So there's a girl in that house? Yeah. Throughout? Throughout. And then you've left for cameras on? Yeah, for, the, for a night. Can you bet you? Yeah, I mean, of, of course, there's going to be something. Oh, my God. But, oh, oh yeah. I mean, like, I'm not claiming the, the, there's a real ghost in this house or anything like that. Yeah. But I literally... Stopped filming first night after we filmed for three hours, and I said, like, that's it. You're done. We're done. We're going to come back tomorrow. Because there was, see, we had this weird, weird, weird thing, because we already checked out the house in YouTube, right? And there were so many things, like, which scares you a lot sometimes. And imagine in the middle of the night, up there, in this house, which is already known, very popular for being a ghost house, and everyone is like, no one is walking alone. Everyone has to be in a pack. So walk together, <laughs> be together, <laughs> eat together, <laughs> be together. That's the, that's the theory of like... Being in a haunted house. Being in a haunted house. You, I literally had a so much of goosebumps every time. But it's was fun and I said like maybe this is the only time I, I want to do something like this because I don't want to go crazy <laughs> oh, hold on so how did you do it so you d- you, p- you did it in one section of the house key you filmed it uh, throughout the jungle no it's all inside the house inside that house inside yeah. that building that yeah. we see so that one building literally in the mo- movie what happens is like we all crew members are the part of the story so we say Goodbye to our actor, actress. We leave her there with her books and then like everything there. And we put on all the cameras on and then she has to survive for a night. (coughs) It's a survival movie. Yeah. And we 
it's just like finding out whether they what they claim is true or not, false. When is the movie coming out? I want to find out if it's true or false. <laughs> 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 Most probably by the end of this year. Hmm. Budgar. Budgar. Because I made a ghar, a horror movie called Ghar before that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So this is a real, a real, real life. Budgar. Real Budgar. Budgar. You changed it to real Budgar. Yeah. Jesus. Why are movies so dark like all the time? All the time. I, 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 use this, I use this word all the time. Yeah, I have started asking that myself too. Yeah, why is it so dark? I don't know. Maybe because maybe I'm Scorpio. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> <laughs> they are known for this. All this. Do you remember that movie where you, where you? Oh shit, man! I forgot. The, I'm so sorry. I forgot mm-hmm. the name of the movie, but you cut all over the face. Danda. Yeah, Danda. Danda. Yeah, Danda. But that was a true story. Yeah, that was a true. Yeah, I wanted to come in. That was a true story. What was the yeah. story behind that movie? So, like I said. Before me being in cinemas and all these things, I've been trying hard to maybe try and go abroad and work. But yeah. we were talking about so many things, and then like you meet so many people, and then someone promised you for America, someone promised you for Europe, and all these things and things. I've heard so many stories, and as per the story, I picked up one, and then I mixed it with this little incident that happened in Darjeeling yeah. a long time ago. What was the incident? was like a s- few of the guys uh, putting one per- person in this bora, tying it up and chopping it down and yeah. throwing it in the river. Yeah, exactly. They survived. Exactly. So that was the... The m- movie? Yeah. Yeah, that... Uh, X, you find some crazy things that I cannot sleep tonight? <laughs> Is that what you're trying to do? <laughs> oh, yeah, they, but, uh, no, I, wa- I want to jump back into uh, the ghost movie. I know... Uh, how did you come up with the idea of Bhutkar? Y- you saw the place and then you just came up with the idea? Uh, this happens to me a lot. And uh, if I find something interesting, then I think over it for a while. And then I come up with the story sometimes and then, then want to make a movie or something like that or I'll pass it to somebody else. So one day I was coming back from Zomsong. Yeah. And the driver the guy who was driving us back to Pokhara, he stopped in front of this house. It was night. And he said, like, this is a ghost house. Everybody is familiar with. And I looked at it. And I, like, I, that was nothing. I was like, oh, okay, well, let's go. And then we, but, like, after a month, somehow I remembered the, the ghost house. house. And I was like, okay. I was trying to do a very minimum low budget cinema as an experiment so that like uh, just to claim that like if you really want to make a cinema maybe you can make but then like I know it doesn't apply to all everyone because I it will be very 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 uh, not fair if I say like if you want you can make cinema just like that no you cannot trust me but I had an advantage of having been working in the cinema industry for a while and I had known few people who, w- who were willing to help me. Yeah. So with their help, when it's a very small crew, we just did it. And we called ourselves the fastest crew in the world. Yeah, two days. It, two days, but then like technically it was not two, 24 hours, like 48 hours. It was around s- f- 14, 15 hours. We finished the whole film in 15 hours. So that was, I think, one of the <laughs> fastest feature film ever made. Are there any dialogues in it? The the act talks, hmm. but not in particular. Like, hmm. so it's just a paranormal activity thing. Hmm. Scary. You know, there's one movie that I just thought about. It's called Push, uh, no, no, Push Pok, Push Pok, Push Pok. Push Pok. South Indian? South Indian movie. I watched it when I was very young. Mm-hmm. It came on TV and I watched it and I'll never forget this movie. Uh, there's a very famous South Indian uh, actor, veteran actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't talk in the movie. Mm, then there are so many other movies. They don't, they don't talk in this movie at all. I still remember. Find out, find this movie. Uh, I forgot the actor. Silent name. movie. Silent movie. Find the silent, most famous South movie. Google that and then you'll find out. Uh, yeah, that's the one. That's one. Yeah, there's a push, 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 push,
It's a uh, common lesson. Com- yeah, common lesson movie. It, 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 it came out when I was born, 1987. And uh, no, no, go back, go back. Zoom out. Uh, go back into any scene of this movie. It's such a beautifully made movie. Mm-hmm. And none of these actors talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's no... Nobody talks in this movie. Yeah. It's all silent. Yeah. It's all... They're, they're just having a conversation. They're having a conversation. Eye-to-eye conversation. Yeah. They're having face-to-face conversation. But they don't talk. It's yeah. such a... It's such a brilliantly made they movie. They already have great actors. Kamal Asan. So he's very... Like, well-known for being minimalist as well. So, yeah. We're not talking a lot, huh? Yeah. What kind of movie do you want to make? Uh, forget about dark movies. Dark movies is your thing. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you were not making a dark movie, what kind of movie would you make? Would you want to make? Okay, so there's one movie which I we, we were talking about, right? Yeah. I started writing this movie in 2007. And 2020... By the end of 2020, I finished the script. Hmm. So it t- literally take, took me, I don't know. 13, 14 years. 13, 14 years. That is the movie. I named it Limbo initially. And now I changed it to Color of Life is Green. So this is the kind of a movie that I actually want to make. The movie that dwells with the inner conflict of the characters rather than the outer space of the story. Because to happen anything, the process starts f- from your gut, I say. You know, nothing happens randomly. Yeah. It, it has a process. So I want to make a story about the process of the emotion that projects through characters. Basically, I want to tell the psycho- psychological, not even the psychological, or maybe subconscious mind of human. Even I, I guess, I can say, I guess. Can you describe that a little bit more? What is the movie about? What is the script about? It's about immigrant, obviously. It's about immigrant, Nepali living in America. Hmm. But it's not the story about America. It's a story about a person and the people associated to him. How they're going emotionally. Hmm. What is the trigger point that is making them what they are now or what they look like now? Not in terms of appearance, but in terms of personality. So... Yeah, it took a lo- long time, but I'm happy. Maybe this year we might make this. Uh, yeah. Somebody who went from Nepal to the U.S. Yeah. or is trying to go? No, so we have a big history, right? Uh, lots of people traveling to foreign land. And the fact is, I think uh, around 1,000 to 1,500 people travels every day. Migrating to or like looking for the better job or work some, somewhere else, like Dubai, Qatar, America, Australia, wherever it is. So, out of that, certain percent of people with everything still lack something. And it's not the physical thing. Yeah. It's something very internal. It's something very you. Yeah. It's something very inside you. Yeah. And whatever is in that's that is why we can define dark or light in terms of characterization. You know, like you said, like why do you write so much of dark? Yeah. Anyway, I'm not writing it. I'm just trying to catch hold of the guts of the characters. So, intentionally or unintentionally. My story is going to be a little bit dark because that's, uh, that's, that's there within us. Even in a good way or a bad way. But there is. You know, there's an interesting fact about if you have ever watched a series called Mindhunters. 
mind hunters before then american like in america they used to catch killers and punish them straight away yeah there's no nothing else but this part of cia started doing a research on okay there's there's the serial killer but why why he likes that why he wants to do that why he wants to kill people what what's there in it hmm so that they can stop or predict what's going to happen if somebody else is there like him uh, so there's there's the whole series of mind hunters right yeah. how they started and what went things and how, what was the purpose of doing this thing things so yeah similarly that is the script that kind of script i like not like i don't mean like mind hunters but then like the way they dis- they are doing it so like even in cinemas like what bollywood us and so many other f- uh, industries is lacking i think as per the script version is i've said this before as well uh, if you check out the cinema called scarface okay yeah this immigrant guy comes to america and then he's been in this uh, place for some time and then suddenly he becomes this and that and his drug laws and then he becomes a bad guy and he becomes the most biggest gangster and then at the end his he comes with this small machine gun and then starts killing people and then he dies so but look at the yeah this one but look at this particular scene when he is doing this before this it takes so much of uh, substance substance brown sugar you know cocaine and all these things and then what he does after that is not him doing that it's the influence of the substance that he is taking and that is creating some sort of friction in his emotions that he don't give a shit anymore about so many things maybe and that how climax happens hmm. so that's the reason and to take to be for him to be able to take that amount of substance he has the history of something going wrong in his life maybe Mm. so that triggered a normal human mind couldn't take it and he used the substance for substitute and then he became someone different and the climax happened mm. so there's a whole process so n- till now what we doing is i love one girl i want to ha- get married to this girl there's through bad guys i have to go and kill someone just because like she's touching my girl that's no no way logic you can be angry about that but killing someone just for the sake of someone touching your girl doesn't make any sense that's crime hmm so you got to be just justif- able to be justify what you're doing and how in cinema too in cinema like okay i don't deny the fact of kgf2 right the biggest blockbuster but still if you look true cinema as a person like you've been spending some time working and writing about it that see at the end a prime minister says fuck it just burn down the place how many people were living there and you're the prime minister of the country you just can't say just get rid of everyone just because you're angry for one guy hmm justify it's yeah, not justifiable it's just justifiable and just because i promised my mother that i'm going to get all the gold in the world doesn't mean i saved that people from other bad guy and i became the bad guy for them to work their ass off for no reason and put them in a situation where the army is going to come and bombard them hmm. i know it's a, it's a, it's a commercial movie it's i can if you love actions and all these things but it's like so many other things you know have you ever to told <coughs> the story of the pashupatinath pashupatinath kun jo cigarette wala oh cigarette wala baba ji wala ha thaina thaina bana su tara you know about it but it's never have you ever published that story yeah we have published that story right but i have never shared the story of the get the tarai version no remember so what had happened was we're filming we're not filming we were in uh, we were somewhere in lahan we were on a tour yeah. 
we were in this crazy ass tour and then you know back to back like today we're going to do this city tomorrow we're going to do this other city and then after next day another city mm. back to back tour it was for a sugar water company and we did some crazy stuff every day we were filming and so every day we were like uh, traveling traveling and we we're doing shows so we we're, we're going from point a to point b we were in tarai we were somewhere in tarai and then late night mm-hmm. i'm talking about like 2:30 in the morning 3 in the morning and uh, two van three vans i believe right big mm-hmm. ones highest big ones my driver go, so my driver knows that uh, i don't sleep mm. so my driver goes like uh, so i say i'm just going to park and we're just going to sleep for i i want to sleep for a while I'm like, sure man why not you know everybody else in the van a couple of guys and they're all sleeping and then i, I don't sleep at all so i'm like okay sure so i just go out i'm just stretching you know i'm just stretching probably smoking a cigarette or something like that in the middle of in the middle of the road mm-hmm. pitch dark nothing is there Tara, there's a party going on. Okay? There's like a wedding party, you know. Pal sal gaade ko, there's like tents and very far, very far. There's like a. This is in land. This is somewhere in land, somewhere in land. <coughs> I really don't know where because it's such late mm-hmm. at night. Somewhere, somewhere in land, somewhere. And then two other guys, they step out. They're like, "Sanjay, what's going on? What are you up to?" I don't know nothing, man. Let's just let's just go there, check it out. They're like, yeah, like let's go check it out. You know, some kind of party going on. We also want to see what's mm-hmm. going on. We can't sleep. They, we start walking away from our van. Okay, this is the highway. We're walking mm-hmm. away from our van. I have two guys to prove the story. As we are walking away, it's dark. The party, the party or whatever is happening like far. We just see, you know, the shining lights. highway you were walking our van is somewhere here we've started walking towards that party van is here the van is back there highway a bus starts coming right mm-hmm. when a bus comes the bus has lights high mm-hmm. high beam lights mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. you see everything on yeah, the road yeah. you see everything yeah, on the road yeah. road is crystal clear i kid you not there's a man sleeping on the road Sleeping, literally like literally sleeping waiting to die mhm as soon as i turn i see a man all dressed in white mm-hmm. complete seto mm-hmm. sab poi thok seto man kapal khore ko so he doesn't have any hair mhm he's literally sleeping there waiting for the bus to hit him mhm as the bus comes closer he gets up mhm he's His feet are on the ground. His ass is on the ground, but half of his body is just waiting for the bus to hit him. Mm. Me and the two guys, we looked at him and we were like shocked. You know, when you're shocked, you don't have any reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah. and then all of a sudden, I think I yelled, "Hey, ki gori go, ki gori go, ki gori go, ki gori go," and yeah. then he just flipped. Mm-hmm. The bus went. He flipped, mm-hmm. and then it's pitch dark again. Yeah. and then we're like ki gore go and then he gets up and he starts running he just starts running now we're running after him me and the two guys were running after him we just want to know what the hell is going on mm-hmm. what's wrong with him you mm-hmm. know a tractor starts coming from the other side a tractor fast moving tractor right mm-hmm. tractor is coming at 2 3 in the morning tractor is coming he's going in front of the tractor like he wants to kill himself mm-hmm. again we're like Udai no udai no udai no ki gore ko and we're all yelling so he runs off the tractor's uh, 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 engine he jumps goes towards the khet now we are like should we go after him on towards the khet or not mm-hmm. so all three of us decided la ami khet tira jai na jai ne we're not going to go to the khet but we're just going to look out for him it's mm-hmm. all dark pitch dark we're going to look out for him if he comes out we'll talk to him we'll mm-hmm. talk we'll try to talk some sense into him mm-hmm. we'll try to talk something to him you know like why do you want to kill yourself or why is he even doing that or maybe he's just drunk you know so we'll probably find his friends and kire uh, hand him over to his friends we never found that guy mm-hmm. we never found that guy we we ran back to our uh, van we turned the van around looked for him never found the guy but there was a guy who was literally there trying to kill himself 
or maybe he was just drunk or something don't know but dressed in white complete white and no hair and no hair and there are three people there are two more people who I can mean like it. shaved hair shaved hair i think it was shaved hair i think it was mm. shaved hair so was he like uh, tarai nepali or i don't know you don't i can't remember okay you 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 don't i don't i don't remember his face okay it's crazy when you when, when a bus comes and you see the light there and then when you see a person just waiting for the bus to hit him hmm it's crazy i don't know how i yelled and then later maybe, on we maybe yelled. that's how he died if that's the worst uh, i never thought about it that way <laughs> i still believe it's a it's a real person i still hmm. believe it's not a ghost but still real i don't know yeah i mean like <clears throat> just to be <laughs> sure about <laughs> where this story is going to end maybe Ooh. he got hit by the bus or something and then died i never thought about it that way i still think that person's real yeah but this i mean like i know like maybe the the presence of these things is there but still there are a few things i think sometimes maybe we project our mind project as our, our, our thoughts in such a way that like because why do ghost always wear white yeah yeah was was the reason why not black a red or any color yellow maybe yellow but then like either either once you see the ghost or maybe maybe we become a color blind and then even if you are wearing yellow you it might present as white true do you think you've ever seen anything i've experienced like i said i've experienced the the fragrance of this uh perfume once that that was in australia and i don't know whether it was real or not but then some sort of uh movement when i was shooting for the ghost house yeah but not not in vivid way i guess like i cannot claim that i believe that it does it, it does exist but in my mind i can say 20000 times like it exists do you think it exists uh, yeah. in my mind i don't know man <laughs> i don't know what do you think what do you think happens when we die what do you think happens when we die see there is a whole logic behind this for me so i was so much into spiritual things back old days when i was very young and uh, i still believe in this theory which stopped me from the quest of nirvana and uh, this is just this is completely my personal opinion yeah it, it has nothing to do with the proven theories or anything but i believe anything that exists as a component as uh, uh, as a figure or as anything it consists of energy right the water that we drink is also like hydrogen and oxygen if you break it down as per the scientific thing so when we order pizza when we order fried rice or whatever it, it is what we eat we name it but at the end of the day our stomach doesn't understand it as pizza or burger it just that's just of good or bad energy that we eat right yeah so as per this theory i say when like if you follow the spiritual path and try to be that person mm. as which uh, spiritual knowledge will take you towards it says this i have always said like when you do meditation for this time and when you f- you know follow the rules and things and like that you will be nirvana yeah your soul will be liberated but no one said what happens after nirvana hmm. 
okay, I am ready to be a part of that Nirvana society, but then 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 what? Yeah. Why? Why do we or why do I have to liberate as a soul? What is the reason? Yeah. And for what? So I think this is my personal opinion. Yeah. Maybe some other people must have like thought about this the way I thought, but I don't know that. But my personal opinion towards this is see, if you follow the ecosystem, each individual thing from ant to plant to human to animal, everyone serving in one way or another for each other to help each other to be alive mm. right so what if this is a theory that i came up with and i'm very happy with this theory mm-hmm. what if the universe has been fitted with the energy from the creator for example i don't know what creator is a uh, uh what do you call it uh, uh energy that helps ecosystem or that helps universe to live but he also needs to be fitted with some other energy he or she he or she oh mm. that particular creator energy so what if we that energy is known as god bhagwan ya god god energy what if god energy fits create and creator fits the universe hmm so what about the god hmm who's going to feed god to have that amount of energy to feed the universe or to feed the creator of the universe i think that's why nirvana is important is because we have to become the energy that god can feed hmm and he can relay that energy the creator and the creator fits the universe and we are alive what kind of energy do you think you uh, spread or you want to spread i don't know because i don't know what is oxygen i don't know what is any any form of source of energy i am very much unaware of that hmm. we know the technical word we know the scientific words but i don't know what it is i don't know what, how oxygen is going to look like right yeah so i don't know what kind of energy i have to be but i think i have to be the energy that is balanced with all the emotions positive and negative yeah to have a positive energy you got to be familiar with the negative energy if you don't ex- if there is no negative energy that exists then what's the point of having the positive energy because there won't be any words such as positive or negative hmm So with that theory it defines like maybe there is bad energy or like unwanted energy that's not been fulfilled as a nirvana mm. as as a source to the god then maybe you have all this spiritual reincarnation as a human not not a body but the consciousness the conscious mind or unconscious mind that comes back and goes to the journey again so that you can have to balance because this is like life is like i like i for like for me like mm. playing a football mm. you know like 22 people running around in a small like field without a ball doesn't make any sense but when you have a small thing called a football it makes a lot of sense it does then you have a goal then you have a purpose then you have so many other things even popularity money fame everything is there not because of 22 people but because of small one ball so maybe that ball is what we have to be after nirvana What are you looking for, Arvind? Seriously, what are you looking for in in the things that you want to do? Where do you, where do you want to get? Like, what's what's your goal? I don't know, to be honest. But one thing that I, I know is 
we shouldn't be worried or we shouldn't be unhappy about so many things that we are hmm. unhappy or happy about. That's my quest. I'm I'm not saying I'm I'm up to that point. Because you need bad of you as much as good of you. Hmm. That's how you balance yourself. That's how life becomes interesting. Otherwise, our life will be something like me with dressed up in a, in a, in, a, in a football attire, and there's no football at all. Hmm. Interesting. Well, yeah. a, good, uh, a, a different perspective to put it. What do you want to say to that young, uh, that twenty-year-old uh, Arpan Thapa again? If you if you could go back on time, what do you want to say to that guy? I would have said one thing. It's like. You shouldn't have started into spiritual spiritualism too early. <laughs> <laughs> you should have done it later. <laughs> you right? should have lived your life for a while. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like no drinking, no smoking, no nothing, and like one meal a day. Yeah, lots of meditation and all these things. So, I was really, 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 really back in time, and then suddenly, I stopped everything. Because I came in the verse of saying like, okay, this is the life I got. This is, I know myself because I'm alive. So I want to know myself until the day I don't know myself. Yeah. So let's just start with that thing. And then we t- took a different thing and then I came into cinemas and doing so many things. But at the same time, I was always figuring out trying to figure it out, like, what's the purpose? Because if you think logically, there are so many uh, things that you cannot explain. For example, I'm not against any religion. Hey, this might sound really, really controversial at the same time. But for example, you, we all say, for example, say, Ram as a Lord. We have heard of so many stories, Ramayana and all these things. But give me one reason why we call him a God. Just because he went to 14 years of jungle life, or he just bashed Ramon in in his place and got back his wife. What what is the reason? So even for example, say Buddha is not a person, right? Siddhartha Gautam became a Buddha. So before that, he was. Not the enlightened one. And not the enlightened one. He was a prince, born in, in, in a royal family. Right? So what was good? Even it applies to the, maybe Jesus Christ as well. So what is good? Them, living everything, going to the jungle, finding the nirvana. Or Buddha, Siddhartha Gautam, becoming a king a really good king and serving his country and die. Hmm. Which would have helped a lot in practical life. So in movies, when you, when I have watched like so many other movies, like let's talk about the movies that our people follow, like say KGF2. Yeah. When Rocky Bhai bashed up, like smashed this people, 20,000 people, and kicked their ass, we all are happy. No? Because he stood up. If you talk about practical life, hmm. he stood up and he did something. So why not Jesus did the same thing? Why did he crucify himself? You question, um, uh, you question yourself on this? Often? No. What is the purpose? Why? Th- see, this is not a controversial uh, a question that I want to put on. Yeah. But my co- point is, okay, if he did that, if Buddha did that, if Lord Ram did that, Shiva did that, or whatever, then there should be the reason 
and the reason of being healthy mind or happy mind doesn't consist with the iPhone 14 at Tesla. It consists within yourself. It's a relationship that you make with yourself. Yeah. It's the understanding that you create with your conscious and subconscious mind that tells you, that convinces you, that makes you think right when even, even when you are in the mis misery or in the highest of your life. You're trying to figure out the purpose every day? I think I've known the purpose as for my theory. But the biggest challenge is you have a ball, now you need to kick it. And there's 11 people standing in front of you. So that's life. Hmm. And you cannot do it alone. Hmm. That is why we n it's very in necessary for it, us to unite. Why do you want unity when you can, when you have to eat yourself to survive? You have to do yourself to feel good or bad. Then why do you need me or anybody or any association with you? There is a reason for that. And the reason is? Is to balance. To balance everything within you with outside you. What would you want to go ahead and say to somebody who is thinking of uh, pursuing a career in the path of art? See, for me, art is something <coughs> that is not you can learn or create. Hmm. I think art is something that you need to understand. You know? So, for example, in fashion industry, yeah. a designer makes a design, a creates a design, and a model wears it and walks. So what's the difference? Is model artist or, or the person who designed the dresses are an artist? Even in cinema, there's directors yeah. and actors. Yeah. So to create a great art, that is why unity is so important. We've got to understand each other. If all the religions collides in the same form of understanding, then our world would, world would have been the better place, I guess. People don't work hand in hand. <laughs> no, it is hard. We can, but it is hard. That's how where you balance your ego, the anger, frustrations, happiness, sadness, everything you balance, your desires. It's like making a movie, yeah. being a director. Self-control is something that is uh, that we go through every day uh, with whatever we do as well. Yeah, you sometimes know consciously, sometimes unconsciously, but we do. Um, Every day, every day we're making choices, right? Every single moment we're making choices. Even right now, we're yeah, making but for a what? choice. That's the point. What for what? Uh, no, I'm coming to that. Let's say I want to drink uh, coffee or I want to go ahead and drink water. You know, I'm making making a choice on what uh, what I want to go ahead and do, right? So my brain is going to try to go ahead and calculate, like, what are the chances of me going ahead and drinking coffee. Is. Let's say if I want to go ahead and stay alert more, then I'm going to take a sip of the coffee. Yeah. Or let's say if I'm thirsty, then I'm going to go ahead and take a sip of the water. Yeah. So these are the choices that you make. And sometimes you make dumb choices. Sometimes you make mistakes. That is there. Yeah. For example, that is there. Yeah. But if you have to keep out of, keep your muscles out of dehydration, then of course you have to drink water, yeah. not the coffee. Yeah. If you want to be awake, or if you're lazy, too, too lazy to work or some things, then if you want energy, you may drink coffee. Yeah. So there's a difference even when you drink. Yeah, yeah, th there definitely is. You just have to, you just have to uh, pick and choose what you want. And sometimes I, I know where you're getting on this. Sometimes the dark side. Uh, again, I'm a big fan of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the dark side pulls you towards uh, doing things that you probably shouldn't be doing, or things that you don't want to go out and do. Yes, but there is one thing as well. What's that? 
you just can't be conscious about what to do and what not to do. Sometimes you have to do something that is you shouldn't be doing. That's how you learn. Give me an example that you've done maybe. I think we all have done. Made mistakes? Mistakes of course. But then like that mistakes whether it's big or small will encourage your inner being to analyze yourself. Even if you are doing good or if you're doing ba- bad. But both the way you are in so too much of luxury might create some sort of different personality in you whereas too much of poverty will also create some sort of personality in you of course you know so when you have nothing and when you get everything can you imagine you were a different person when you had nothing and you're a different person when you have everything now it doesn't mean both the persons are good or both the persons are bad the point is even when you are with nothing and with everything yeah are you you still oh that's a big question that's it, you should definitely make a movie of a poor guy who definitely got rich overnight <laughs> that that would be something very interesting to go ahead and see i believe i believe every every day we're trying to go ahead and figure ourselves out you know mm. i'm trying to figure myself out every single day you're trying to do the same i believe and then you don't have to do it vaguely consciously you yeah, can yeah, you yeah. can go ahead and uh, yeah. figure yourself out too and i believe you should question yourself on the things that you're doing uh, constantly more you question yourself on the things that you're doing and the choices that you're making the more uh, the more alert and attentive you're going to be on uh, your well-being and the well-being of people around you i'm sure you want everybody around you to be uh, in uh, their best ability like yourself don't you yeah, yeah. i mean like of Of course see who don't want what other people want it's the same thing we we don't want a different thing we want the same thing it could be a little bit different with with the points but we want same everybody wants the same thing yeah the basic thing everybody wants is the money right sure and then there comes any uh, so many other things you know I might build a different house than what you built. True. But that doesn't mean I don't want the house. I still want the house, you still want the house. To have a house, you need a money. So, money is the main source that consists happiness and unhappiness in us now. Mm, I of course, I will I will agree to this and I'll disagree to this as well. Mhm. I have met some of the richest people in the world in the world. I'm l- I'm thankful and I'm lucky on that. And I've met some of the some people who've really had really really hard time getting ends meet every single day, every mm-hmm. single day. You know one thing that uh, when I when I talk to everybody, you know, from the high end to the bottom end, it's time. The thing that everybody's trying to figure out is time. you know everybody believes that the times are going to change that rich man or that rich woman is always going to have in mind that someday i'm going to be poor and somebody who is trying to get by somebody who is trying to go ahead and you know uh, get started in life is always going to think that i'm i might go ahead and be that rich person you know the the difference between all of that is time time is going to go ahead and See, teach you where you're going to be no that is time is not us time is nature right when a person is born until he's 10 his physical body has to be developed to be able to stand up and walk around right as soon as that process has come to the point where some l- amount of development in your body born and structures happened and then consciousness starts to build yeah when your conscious starts to build by the time you are 20 still immature a lot yeah. of things to be then 
by the time you're 30, you come through so much of emotional ups and downs, then you become a little bit of you. Yeah. Right? Whether you have money, whether you don't have money, whether you're well-educated, you are not well-educated, it doesn't matter. You is different than what other thing is. No. So, and then you have maybe you got married and things like that and you're still running through so many other emotions and things. You're getting familiar with the happiness, the true nature of unhappiness, sadness, so many things. By the time you're 40, you're a little bit different. Because you have understood life in, in some other perspective now. Right? And by the time you're 50 to 60, then there is, anoth there is another, another physical transformation that's going to happen. From 20 till 50, you're bound with the emotions, highly. Ambitions and all these things. But before 20 and after 50 to 60, there's physical abilities also involved in your life. So those things are taken care of by the nature. But by the time you start 20 and you come to the point where 70 or 80, let's say, 60, those are the time where you have to go through every ups and downs in your life to understand it. And then when you are successful about a little bit, getting a little bit about like, okay, what and why? Then, even, I'm talking on the basis of, say, for example, spiritualism as well. And then, even if you die, if your body dies, without fulfilling the conscious or subconscious or unconscious mind being there at the point of nirvana, then maybe you uh, there's a big chance of your conscious mind getting reincarnated and fulfill that journey again with the ability to understand the emotions a little bit better than what you were before. What do you want to be re uh, incarnated as? I don't want to. You don't want to be reincarnated again? I think I had enough of my life. You're done? <laughs> I'm done. Done in the way is like, okay, that, what more to learn? Because you, it's like watching the same cinema again. Tell me, what is success for you, Arvindai? Success for me is something that makes me a lot and happy. But not someone who lives with it. I think success gives me encouragement to do more better, yeah. to be more better, to be more happy, and to be more useful. So I don't think success is something that is the end of the story. I think it's the beginning of the story. So that you can try more. Especially if you don't make a lot of money. The thing that I wanted to wanted to share earlier that I was trying to share was everybody rich poor doesn't matter. When you talk about time, when w when you limit time, you know, with time there comes hope. If your times are bad, you're hoping that your times are going to be good. Mm -hmm. Same. Mm -hmm. When there are really good times, you know, some of the richest people I know that I've met, times are good right now, bro. Times are going good right now, but I'm just preparing for my worst time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same thing with people who are starting off, uh, you know, trying to uh, acquire something. It's the same thing that they say. I'm just preparing for my good times right now. And time, time is gonna come. Yeah, yeah. That's that that makes logically right, and then that's very true. But my point in that is, if you're not an asshole when you're in a bad time. And if you're not a jerk when you're in a good time, people will love you no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the balance. <laughs> We're just not trying to be assholes <laughs> all the time. <laughs> right? we, wanna, we don't want to be assholes all the time. Right? Sometimes we'll end up being... <laughs> yeah. The whole point is we don't want to be assholes all the time. <laughs> Jesus, this is fun. <laughs> when is the movie coming out, man? I'm excited. When, when is the movie... Chopper Light. When is Chopper Light coming it's, out? It's already went 
Last time. Last time. So, but uh, there's a movie called uh, Chiso Manchi. When is that coming out? Uh, this is coming in July. Uh, sorry, June. Nice. Chiso Manchi. If I find that out, Chiso yeah. Manchi. TJ was out a what? few months back. What's your character like? I uh, this is a story about uh, a, a dead body that comes from the yes. uh, Gulf countries, like uh, uh-huh. like people working there, and they die, and the this body is sent back to Nepal. So this is a story about a driver, a father of a body, and a wa- uh, wife of a body traveling with this dead body to the village in the time of lockdown, Corona. You you're the driver? Yeah. That's the dead body. Yeah. 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 You're the driver? Yeah. What's the name of your character? Do you have a name? I have a name, but I don't think uh, they ever say the name. Okay. They never say the name. Yeah. Call your answer is June. 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 Find a find a find a poster of the uh, movie. And then what's the other movie then? Other movie, I like like it. I've just finished the shooting for Lucky. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah Lucky. I was hearing about it. Yeah. And uh, we are planning to make a movie next end of this year, most probably called uh, Vetala. V- Vetala. Yeah. What's the meaning of Vetala? Vetala. Is 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 a form of god, which is is, is worshipped by like a uh, Hindu. Hmm. And if you are familiar with the story of Bikram and Betal, Bikram Betal. Sorry, I really don't so know. So there was this Bikram Betal thing. Yeah, this in is Hindu nature. folklore, the Betal uh, is an evil spirit who haunts cemeteries and takes demonic possessions of corpses. Okay, they make their displeasure known by troubling humans. All right, they can drive people mad, kill children, and cause miscarriages, but also guard villages. So, Name me one movie where you're not a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but this this is not about a ghost. This is the very first film from Nepal which is gonna be about vampires, because Vetal is a vampire. What? Yeah. And it's made in Kamboni, go you? This uh, uh, we are planning to shoot it in Manam. Oh, you haven't shot it yet. Oh, so this is the reason why you were like mm. uh, thinking of going mm. to mm. Manam. Find a photo of uh, X. Go find find an image of this. This is so cool. I really want to know more about this. Betal, I know. Go. You are the lucky boy, Ali. When is this coming on? Uh, I don't know yet. No, go back. Go back to the interesting part. Uh, Nepali vampire. It's Hindu. It's uh, sorry. It's a Hindu vampire. Yeah. Oh, go to this. This is so interesting. Hostile spirits. So the Vetala is comparable to the vampires. Yeah. In the Hindi mythology. Yeah. Yeah. This is so interesting. This is so interesting. So you want to film the uh, this in... Uh, uh, no, go no. down? Uh, no, somebody, somebody must have been... This is so interesting. Okay, I'm excited. Do you want to film it in Manang? Yeah. Where do you want to film it? Have you found places, location? Yeah, we know. Uh, we have did the location right here on the, all this. But we're still uh, not enough with the budget and everything so we are proposing it to we're doing sales things in australia europe and then like uh, america with uh, sales agents and then one of the company from australia two of the company from australia is involved one is called joy house pictures one is called empire pictures and the joy house pictures is directly producing the film whereas uh, empire pictures is doing the sales thing how many are you going to do it in english or nepali we're doing it in nepali original language okay but there's another movie called Color of Life is Green, which will be in English. Color of Life? It's green. I, Color of Life is green. And uh, when are you sure? Have you already shot it? No. We might start by end of June. Or well, what is this about? This is about the immigrant. Oh, yeah. The, the yeah. one that you were sharing me about, the American uh, yeah. immigrant. Nice. Well, I'm excited about this one, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so we're going to go it's, in. It's with the landscape and everything, it's pretty much gonna look like revenant. Yeah, let me 
let me know. I'll fly down there. I want to play a party in Vietnam. I want to be killed. I want to be killed. I want to be killed. I want to be, yeah, I want to be killed, thrown off the uh, mountain of Monang. Cool, buddy. I'm mad at a pile of them. That's going to be so cool, man. I hope it's going to be. Like, I'm also really excited about Vitala, to be honest. Find me a role that you side, side, <laughs> side, side role where somebody <laughs> throws and kills, you know, one of those, one of those roles where you get <laughs> killed, you know. Surume Morni role. Surume Morni I only got a room, man, do you I know, let me let me think. There was a movie of yours where somebody gets killed, uh, killed so bad. Oh my god, I'm forgetting. I think it was Makota. Somebody gets killed real bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a lot of people get killed yeah. real bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they seriously, I'm, I'm super psyched, and you have to come back again. I want yes, you to yes, come yes, back yes, again. Yes, 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 yes. I actually enjoyed a lot, to be honest, uh, because uh, finally, finally, I didn't find the pattern. There's no pattern here. Yeah, finally. There is no pattern. <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much. There is no pattern. I want you to come back there. I want you to share w- when the other movies are coming out. I definitely want you to come yeah, back, yeah, and yeah. I want to share. I want. To, I want to talk to you about thousands of other things. There. Yes, sure. Uh, right. And then I'm very happy. And thank you very much for having me. No, thank you very much for coming. And man, I'm so excited that we're doing a vampire movie at the end. <laughs> I'm so psyched. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you very much. You. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Woo! If you love what we are doing, make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications. This program is brought to you by Via Studios.